So I wanted to talk to you about your veto of the anti-puberty blocker trans surgery bill in April of 2021. At the time, you said that the bill was extreme and that it would interfere with the treatment of minors seeking to transition from male to female or female to male. Given, and I'm not attacking you for it, but I am asking if in the subsequent two years you've had rethinking of that. Have you reassessed your view on it since then? Well, uh, first of all, I want to ask how many of you all are parents in this room? I'm a parent as well. And uh, what I believe in is that parents ought to raise their children. I believe that parents ought to be in control. And I also believe in the Constitution. I believe that God created two genders and that there should not be any confusion on your gender. But if there is confusion, then parents ought to be the one that guides the children. That to me is an important fundamental principle. Now obviously you could take it too far and if there would have been a bill that said uh, you uh, should not ever have transgender surgery as a minor, I would sign that in a minute because no parent should be able to consent to that permanent change. But this bill did go too far, it was unconstitutional, it interfered with parents, and so I sided with parents on that bill in, in managing the most sensitive issue that a parent can face. And I believe in a limited role of government, and so, you know, if I don't think that California ought to be able to tell parents you need to have gender-affirming care for the children. The government should not do that. And in the same way, let's keep the government out of it unless it's that extreme case, and let's let parents guide the children. I stand with parents. So, and, and, and amen for standing with parents, and I think everyone in the room would agree with that. Um, but the reason I asked the question was not to bring up a sore subject, which I, I know that it is, uh, but to ask if in the subsequent two years, you, you had said that you drew the line at castration of, of physical altercation of a child's body because it's permanent. But in the subsequent two years, I think we've learned that hormone therapy for prepubescent children is permanent. It changes the bone structure. It changes the brain of the child. It, a lot of people believe, including me, that it, it destroys the child's life. But it is permanent. It's not reversible. So given that and the standard you just articulated, do you have different feelings? I mean, this is a permanent change we are making to a child. Why would we allow that if we don't allow surgery? Well, you, permanent change is one issue, but also hormonal treatment is a different issue and can be a different issue. And whenever you look at the bill that I vetoed, there was not any grandfather clause in there. Again, uh, I respect legislators that have a different view, but I think independently, I think of the parents, I think of the Constitution, and actually the court, if you read the decision of the federal judge that struck it down as unconstitutional, really sided with parents as well. But how is, whenever, it, but how is it treatment? I guess that's my question. If you have a child who says, who's born a boy, I want to become a girl, he hasn't gone through puberty yet, he's say 10. Is it treatment? to prevent him from going through the natural process of adolescence? How is that treatment? It, it seems not like treatment. It seems like something else. Well, you have to, Tucker, I hope that we'll be able to talk about some issues. I know that- Well, this is can... one of the biggest issues in the country, and I think I would, every person in this room would agree that it is a, a central issue because it, these are children who are being altered permanently, and you can defend that alteration, that change, if you like, but there's really no debate about whether or not it's permanent. And so I think it's fair to ask you in a calm, rational, and I very much hope polite way, why you would support that. Well, I didn't say what I supported, I said what I vetoed. And whenever you look at, at children and what they're challenged with in life, I think it's important that in the most sensitive issues that parents are able to guide them through that challenge. And so I don't like the schools pushing transgenderism. I don't want the schools, uh, for example, when President Obama issued the uh, order from the Department of Education that you ought to have bathrooms in the schools that uh, the children can choose what their gender is and go to which bathroom they think they are that day. I said that is not consistent with the law. 
I said that. Uh, Wait, but I'm, I'm I, no, no, I'm, no, no. But no. you said that children should be able to choose their gender, and their parents should be able to affirm that, and the state has no role in getting involved. So how is that different? You're saying that a child shouldn't be able to choose a bathroom, but he can choose his sex. I don't understand. Let me finish okay. what I Great. said. Let me finish. Oh, I hope if you will. you don't mind. Well, please do. And the finish is that I told Obama they were wrong. I said it publicly that the school districts can ignore that guidance. And so that's where I think this, the government should not be pushing an agenda in our schools. And that's what I oppose. And so I want the government to stay out. I want the parents and communities and our faith to guide us through these difficult decisions. And so I'm a, I'm a parent and whenever, uh, I, I think it's very important that if a child goes to a teacher and says, I think I'm a boy, but I think I might ought to be a girl. Well, the school, and they want to do something about it. The parents ought to know about that. And so like New Jersey is totally wrong in suing the school districts that want to be able to tell parents. These are fundamental principles that parents have to have information. They shouldn't be denied the uh, ability to know what's going on in the school with a yes. child. And then they make the decision. They can go to the doctor if the child is suicidal, if the child is struggling, uh, they want to, uh, they discuss uh, uh, hormonal treatment that would delay puberty. Uh, I don't think this government should come in and tell the parents you can't give the child a vaccine or you must give the child a vaccine or you cannot give them the treatment that you think is important in discussion. But, with, but so, with and, and I think you're a person of good faith and I'm not attacking your motives at all. I'm just trying to get to what they are. And I, and I will stop with this. But you have repeatedly described delaying a child's natural progression from childhood to adulthood through adolescence, you describe that as, quote, treatment. And so that raises the, I mean, clearly you've answered the question, you believe it's treatment. You believe, I suppose, that people can change their sex. Because if you don't believe that, you wouldn't call it treatment, would you? <laughs> well, the God created two genders, and that's what I have stated. And whenever you look at the decisions on that, no, I don't, I don't support that. I wouldn't make that decision in my family yes. about and changing genders. And I don't believe that taxpayers' funds should be used for transgender surgery or treatment through Medicaid or Medicare or in our military. Yes. I don't believe that that should happen uh, because uh, Traditionally, whether it's the Hyde Amendment that you prohibit funding of abortion with taxpayers' dollars because it violates the religious commitment of many people, the same principle should apply here. I'm saying one simple fundamental thing that we have to have a debate as to what is the limited role of government. Let's encourage parents to make decisions. Uh, obviously, they can go too far and you draw a line and legislatures have to do that. Yes. But that is the reason Arkansas is one of the first states that had to address this, and uh, we handled it. Uh, the law has been suspended because it was unconstitutional. Other states have done a better job in it, have redrafted the laws. I haven't read them all, but they have varying dif differing degrees of, uh, uh, of, of changes in it, such as having grandfather clauses where you don't force a parent to take the child out of state uh, whenever they're undergoing treatment. Well, no one would be forcing the child to go out of state. It, the parents would, would make that decision. But 